Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. no, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, like a terrible, <laughs> terrible <laughs> strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocates. If I say today's edition is going to be cool, calm and collected, I may be lying. Instead, it may be hot, sizzling and provocative. I cannot pretend as if she's introducing a moderate conversation by asking us to look at Nigeria beyond 59 years. Let's see where we'll go from there. Benga is pulling no punches. He's calling out our youths as lazy, frivolous and misdirected. Should I go on? Hey, don't shoot the messenger. Uche is openly looking for trouble once again. She says climate change is hysterical horse. Let's see how that goes down. Emeka may well be the soberest among us. Anyway, you know him, Ajay. He's calling out the malpractices in our medical system. I'll be setting off the fireworks by asking, is Omoyele Showere, is he to come or should we expect another right after the break? On the 30th day in the ninth month of the year, but in the fourth month, in the first year of the second reign of President Buhari, and so it was that the Department of State Security, here and after known as DSS, Arain Omoyole Showere, the presidential candidate of Action Alliance in the 2019 presidential election in Nigeria, on charges bordering on treasonable felony, punishable with life imprisonment. And some of the grounds of the charges are that Showere was planning to overthrow a democratically elected government after losing an election by calling out a protest which he tagged Revolution Now. He was bundled out of his house on a Friday night into a Department of State Security facility in Lagos before he was subsequently transferred to Abuja. The DSS thereafter applied for a court order to remand him for 45 days pending investigation and subsequent arraignment. While the DSS promptly obeyed the order allowing them to hold him for 45 days, even before it was certified by the courts, they refused to obey a subsequent one, granting him bail. Claiming that the EDA had not seen the order, despite the service of a certified true copy on them, or as someone said, they probably were waiting for directive from a god up above. In the face of the obvious provocation by government and the surreptitious clamp down dissenting voices, the silence of the Nigerian human rights community, the Bar Association, was deafening. And the ordinary people started asking questions. Where is the solidarity forever? We shall always fight for our right. That the civil society people chant at meetings and gatherings. Where are the people and voices that occupied Nigeria over the Pope hike? Where are the lawyers that refuse to attend court when the military government refused to obey court orders? Where are the activists who are quick to claim that an injury to one is an injury to all? I'll be sure will not be one of them again. So many questions, but no answer. Only time will tell if indeed solidarity was ever forever or only for better. Nice one. Mm. You like. <laughs> okay. like. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm glad someone brought up the Shore matter because you know I didn't want to bring it up and also be pushing it as if it were my only, you know. Um, but I, I, I'm pained by the situation that's going on with Shori and anybody who's being held under those circumstances simply because I feel it's an affront on our democracy. When you ask the question, where are all these people? I would just say it's cowardice. I know a lot of times they've said, oh, it's because Shori seemed to be running his own People felt they couldn't identify with the show ray, you know, move that they, they would argue that when it was subsidy, um, occupy, that everybody had a stake, but that this one somehow doesn't inspire them because Shori may have his own agenda, Shori made this. I just feel look, at the end of the day, we all know what we're what we're suffering here. So for me, it was neither it was never about him as a person. It was only about saying, look, this the, the, the country is hot, is hot for all of us, and we all need to join, you know, voices together, you know, and, and, and make our voice heard. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm like you, I'm totally disgusted 
by what is going on. Um, but I also feel like the people uh, have gotten to a stage where we're muzzled, really. We can't, see, you know, we're afraid to speak our minds now because we can see, I mean, on a daily basis, the DSS is picking up people just like that. Okay. You know, I think the other day they just picked up a Sahara reporter journalist. You know, and then when people made quite a big noise about it, they released him later okay, on. Okay, Chido one more. Yes, exactly. Okay, okay, yeah. So yeah, they're, he, they're, they're he picking up people. We're all Biafra. We're all we're Biafra. All Biafra. Yeah. I, I, so, I, so I think they've not even read the book. No, no, no. If they have mm. read that book, they, they didn't know it was the title of it. Yeah, exactly. They didn't know. They mm. just quickly reacted. Now, the other um, complaint I really have is when people say, Shore, let Yoruba people fight for him. You know, he's I haven't there. even heard that oh, one. You, you, need, you need to get more. On. You know, so suddenly it's like, oh, let the Yorubas fight for him. After all, when they were doing Operation Python Dance, you know, in Igbo land, where were the Yorubas? Okay. And so I, I had to actually say, you know what, if you guys are going to now deal with this on a tribal level, then there's something seriously I missed yeah. here. Because we re really, really need to focus on what Shore is fighting for. Mm. And I came across... Um, one of his avid supporters, and he actually said that the one thing about Shore is that he's non-tribalistic. He like is. he has no, Absolutely he doesn't that. even yeah. think along those lines. Yeah. So how are we now going to be treating him but, with that same, you know, measuring? But, yeah. but, that's but this is for me. Um, I I think that the 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 uh, going from what Liberos has just said about whether the activists. Uh, so the question where is, are they? Are they, yeah, where are they? Mm. So is this some kind of fatigued, activism fatigue? Were they ever uh, there? But I don't think so. I, I, 2014, 2015 election, you had all these activists that sort of helped to enthrone mm -hmm. this yes. government. So there's a sense of... They, hypocrisy. They, yeah, you there's some kind of hypocrisy. Like and that. a lot of them are trying to navigate their mm. own mind space in terms mm. of how do we deal with mm. this government. Yeah. Mm. And the other thing is this. I think that um, a lot of people... And this is a government that has shown that it's not afraid to use force. Yes, exactly. Um, and a lot of people are just dealing with trying to survive. Exactly. And like, look, let everybody kind of fend for, you know. I think that's probably uh, the more, uh, yeah, the I, more I, solid yeah, but, reason. But, 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 you know, because people help to enthrone people. People help to enthrone this is being But you have something to say before I I'm not a lawyer, but I think you are one. Yeah. 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 Um, after he messed up the democratically elected Shio Shagari. Mm. Do you understand? Who, who mm. arrested yes. him for treason treasonable that's offenses, um, whatever? That's mm. section one, subsection two of that's the right. constitution. Thank you, sir. Mm. But Femi Falano said, if I'm going to go to court, my first witness will be the president himself. Mm. Yes. We heard do, that. do you understand? Mm. Now, are there people who are telling him what to do, or is it that he doesn't know I'm his office? I'm misadvising him. Adv thank you. That's um, possible. Um, so you spoke about Professor um, Wole Shoyinka. Mm. Professor Wole Shoyinka, I don't expect him on the street again, because in 2012, <laughs> yes. when we did Occupy Nigeria, he told us bluntly, he said, you know what? I started fighting on the street in 1962. Mm. This is 2012. I'm old. 50 years I'm fragile. After, nothing has changed. Mm. I'm old, I'm fragile. Don't expect me on the street again. You guys should take over. Yes. Now, Femi Kuti said, on that same note, he said, you know what? I was three years old when my father started fighting for Nigeria. My father is dead. I'm mm. still alive. I'm over 50 now. Do you still expect me to continue the fight? On the final note, settlement. Because I remember when um, GEJ's problem in 2010, about transmitting of power mm. uh, when Jaradua died. Yeah. Mm. Save Nigeria group came out, marched on the surface of Nigeria in every, yeah. every, every, every state. state yeah. And had to, you know, whatever they got. Yeah, well, now, but, what happened? That, that same group cannot sort out because no, then this same Shogure was part of the movement. What the government does not know is that people like Shogure the prison cannot hold them down. Mm. Or the, at, at best, what the government is doing for him, here we are discussing Shawarena, mm. ordinarily wouldn't have been discussing yeah. him. What the government is doing for Shawarena is his raising his profile, mm. making him a brand. And there are so many disgruntled youths out there who are looking for that person who mm. will be the face, you know, to the redemptive song. 
And if government is not careful, mm. they might just elevate Showare to that level mm. that they never expected. And then you still see him, even in court, shout, shouting, yeah. that revolution, revolution will still happen. Yeah. Because the questions he's asking are valid. Yes. But well, like uh, time is never an issue or a, a friend. Uh, they say you are, time flies when you're having fun. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, confronting issues is what we do here on The Advocate. After the break, Ekene is in search of the way forward. Let's see if we can assist her. If we don't chart our course, we may well be going round in circles. In recent days and weeks, as if by appointment, I have had the privilege of gleaning first-hand experience and knowledge at the feet of men and women who welcomed our birth into independence as youthful teenagers. Their accounts had me transfixed and teleported to a time when the world lay at Nigeria's feet. Some would ask, when was that time? What struck me in a resounding way is that the story of Nigeria is like a journey with several paths. We appear to have chosen and journeyed down one route, but make no mistake, there are dusty, desolate tracks yet untraveled, which would have led us to a diametrically opposed destination. Paths that, if embarked upon, would have rewritten the narrative entirely and produced 59 years on the giant of Africa indeed standing tall and proud, a role model of nations. These parts were drafted into our constitutions, sketched into our national anthem, framed in our pledge. These were all inspired by the one thing, the Nigeria of our dreams. But the harsh reality is we chose the other path, the gold rush or rather oil rush route, towards an easy money and every man for himself, never mind the children and the weak, Never mind our tomorrow's dreams. We didn't earn the title corrupt nation by accident or random events. We had to learn it. It was and is the product of oft demonstrated and imitated modes of behavior. It has become a national culture, hence the global brand. I have never been a fan of everyone is doing it, especially if everyone is on the highway to hell in a handbasket. Furthermore, it's a blatant lie. Everyone is not doing it. There are always a few good women and men, and we must sift them out like digging up diamonds. We must diligently, deliberately search them out and document our true history and heritage. The good book says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children and his children's children. In the face of incessant tales of national inheritance squandered at the hands of crooked custodians, the millennials should go seeking role models and learn at the feet of the few good men and women from the previous generation left standing, if they are to lay hold of their inheritance. When all is said and done, Nigeria is what we choose to make it. Um, Happy independence, people. Mm, Happy same, independence. Same, <laughs> same way you have um, these people trying to leave inheritance for their children because they take this your inheritance literally and not um, figuratively. Okay, the not, crooks. Uh, yes, and, and so what you have is a situation where there are no more role models okay. you know, yeah. in, in the spotlights. Okay. And, and so I would, before the program, we talked about um, having mentorship, political mentorship. And that's why you, you hear the likes of uh, uh, BC or Nobanjo, Jack Conde, um, Bolaige. Bolaige and Co. say they were mentored by Pa Awolowo himself. Okay. But with the military intervention and that interregnum, the military mentored people. And what did they mentor people in? Corruption. Force. And so, force. Psycho fancy, like Emeka said. And so, what you have Survival now. Survival of the fittest. Yes. So, what you have now are the fallout of those mentorship. And you will need a new order to recorrect the mentorship and the focus and the redirection. And that's where people would follow. O otherwise, what we have here now is you are a lawyer, you are a psychophant, and then you're called, you're elevated to the table mm -hmm. of these so-called men. And, and that's why there seems not to be Like a reward. And <laughs> that, exactly. That's why when you correct them now, you are seen as the enemy. You are called names, detractor, and all sorts. And that's why, to round up on this... You're even told you're not patriotic. Yes, it is easy <laughs> mm. for you to praise and eulogize a man who is not performing so that your daily bread will be certain than to question him. You, you, can't, you can be wiped out from the surface of the wow. earth. Wow. But we have to. 
I, th I think that um, um, it harkens back to all that we've said on numerous occasions, at least I've had the opportunity of being on this show. The fact we talked about how this country was born. Mm. Um, you know, the birth of this country is not as glorious as we like to yes. think it is. Yeah, yeah. The birth of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. It's, it's the birth of it, even going back to 1914, mm. was a series of of compromises in 1960, the independence. Yeah. It's not as glorious no. as we, 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 you know, we're patch, we're patchwork. Mm -hmm. and, and so the business of Nigeria has always been around how to put this patch, patch this thing together. together. And the business of Nigeria has Consistent ultimately patching. become politics of power. It's, it's, the, it's not about development. Mm -mm. It's not about common you know, good. Common good. It's about how do I keep power? Mm -hmm. How do I keep power? How, what do I do with power? And how do I keep the other tribe or the other groups away from power? Mm. And so you have the, you've grown. It's like Game of Thrones. Exactly. <laughs> so we have found ourselves, you know, like Libero said, this group of politicians, whether in army uniform or in Agbada, whose entire business is about, you know, mm. maintaining, you know maintaining power. power. And so you have this, you know, almost like a roulette going around my every turn. four years, mm. it's my turn, it's not my turn, exactly. it's our turn. It has to be our turn. Mm. Nothing, you, you never hear any discussion about how do we deal with the fundamental of how this country is and mm. how do we build, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, the next 59 years, how do we construct a vision of a more united, a more developed country? Mm -hmm. You'll not hear that discussion. I mean, we've had a, a system. We're already planning for 2023. Yeah, 23. There's a whole politics now that's devoted to 2023. Um, you know, the game of cards or the game of throne mm. here. But no, no conversation around Oh, education, yes, science, exactly. the vision, mm. trade, technology, infrastructure. infrastructure. Yeah. But all we hear is about who's going to be president mm -hmm. and who's going to be vice, and whether it's yes. going to be the turn of the Igbos mm -hmm. or, or the, the Euro the West <laughs> or the Middle Belt, or mm. they just, that's all we're on about. Yeah. And that's sad. And it that's, is, and, it and, is. And so we can't go forward. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we spoke of mentorship, and I was like, I'm not even sure that it's really mentorship that is... Because I think we know what we ought to be doing. Okay. I don't think there's any Nigerian leader or even Nigerian that doesn't really know what the right thing to do. No, it's I can whether... tell you, Joe, there are so many that don't know. <laughs> okay, maybe they're not but focusing on it. That's they don't probably I, I think, no, I so think... Is it not when you know that you focus on? No, 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 they don't want They're deliberately to choosing because to like, like what focus Emeka on said, other things. You know, that's, that's the point I'm going back to. Like what Emeka said, it's, it's about grabbing power. You mm -hmm. know, there are enough programs. Like even, even before that's this show started, I spoke about how I was tired of a particular program airing every year, you know, with key speakers, you know, everybody blowing grammar and you know in terms of what are the solutions to Nigeria's problem we have Everybody's enough an expert. people to tell us so nobody can tell me that they do not know it's a matter we, of where really, we traveled abroad and we see what works outside Nigeria yeah exactly yeah. you know so I, I'm really uh, like I really feel almost like we have no hope because not only wow. do we yeah because not only do we have people who like Laboris pointed out have that military corrupt uh, mentality. We also have a group of youths group. <laughs> what no worry, Benga is coming yeah, with his youth. We have the youths youth. who uh, <laughs> have been disarmed in every way. They youth don't, attack. they're not educated, they, they have no motivation, they have no, and, and so their only path can only be corruption. Both the weakness of the youth and, and the, the idleness, idleness of, of the youth. youth, yes. That's a summary. Mm. When you use a ladder to climb, Wisdom and kindness to humanity demands that you leave that same ladder for others, for others to climb. Mm. So it's a combined. But these, our wicked elders, use the ladder to climb. And then they remove it. They remove the ladder, not only remove, they, they destroy it. and, and bump the ladder. Which one are you, elder or? The elder. Our ladder. Our, no, which our one elders. are you, Benga? Are oh, you an elder or a youth? You have to, um, you have to um, take um, some responsibilities for something. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a youth mentor. I'm an elder. Do you understand? That means you can make a change. So that's what we are saying. That's why we are making this advocacy. Mm, yes. So I agree with you, sir. A new mentorship program must be enforced. Leaders think about next generation, but politicians only think about next election. So everything um, emanated, came from our culture. If you trace our history, there is a kind of force in us. An average Nigeria or an average African is doing whatever he's doing, either to oppress or to impress. Mm -hmm. So I'm the one driving the biggest Buster car. Ryan. 
thank you. I have arrived. I'm the one doing this, so everybody can stay rank a day. I think that's our problem. Until we begin to be selfless, Jack on in four years. I'm saying it. I've not seen a 20 year regime that has beaten or that has, I mean, uh, surpassed. surpassed what Jack on did in, in four years. years. That's impressive. Oh. So for that, that, that for me is already a legacy in itself and something we can emulate. Well, we live and learn. Happy 59th year of independence to you. I can't make out if Wenga is doing less of celebrating and more of berating after the break. There is a time for the carrot and a time for the stick. Nigerian youth are here low due to my job, um, what I do every day especially as a youth coach and a mentor. I've seen all manner of unbelievable things in the last 10 years, especially in our great country, Nigeria. So permit me to share a few of them with us as we celebrate our 59th birthday with a sad cake. Our youth watch all forms of international content, ranging from movies to social media, and that has shaped their expectations. But they've been unable to tone down their knowledge to fit into the space they are in, that is Nigeria. Hence, they complain, they are frustrated, and always yearning to be body. That is, <laughs> go meet the grass that appears greener on the other side of uh, Obodo Ibo, they are abroad. So they are internationally oriented but locally irrelevant. They know the names of the Kardashian family members who have no direct or indirect impact on their local government, but they don't care to know their ward councillors, local government chairman, as of rep members or senators, let alone governors, especially our youth, which fall in the class of millennials and partly Generation Z, both at home and abroad. With an entitlement mentality, they know how to complain, but not to be good citizens. So our youth would prefer to dance shaku shaku than to come out and vote on election day. Shawarel is still behind bars, despite the court order disobeyed by the federal government. Yet, what have Nigerian youth done? You hear people say, she be naive won't become president. Making use the political platform to do election revolution now. Nigerian senators are buying 5.5 billion naira worth of brand new cars, SUV for that matter. But many states can't pay 30,000 naira minimum wage. Yet, the Nigerian youth will shout, Baba, when they come to our churches, our mosque, and our streets, just for the greedy politicians who drop crumbs for the agile and muscular but lazy youths. When people are being kidnapped, Nigerian youths will rather go and pray or do Africa insurance to protect himself and their family neglecting others. When power holding people decide to dance disco with our light, we go and buy generator. When fashion boys don't fix our roads, we pray, sow seeds to buy jeeps. After all, the scripture says, deep collect unto deep, but in this part of the world, it is jeep that collect unto jeep. When our public schools are short of teachers and infrastructures are dilapidated, we ensure that our children go to private schools. Uh, many young Nigerians like Felado Toye, Banki W, Kingsley Mohalu, contested in the last election. Nigeria youth prefer to vote for recycled old people just because of 5,000 naira and one tin of rice, tomatoes, shared by these old time politicians. Hmm. And they will say that my own share of the stolen money be that too at the collector. But in 2018, over 170 million votes were cast on Big Brother Niger Show by the same Nigerian youth, 30 naira per SMS. That's 5.1 billion naira in revenue from SMS alone. When you as a youth start to defend fraud stars on social media, then it is now your suffering begins, NYSE. Why are Nigerian youth so obsessed with getting money? Why are these abominable practices seemingly on the increase? Things like baby factories for selling your own babies, eating of human and animal feces, <clears throat> using biological parents for rituals and drug abuse. It's like prostitution is now a career. <laughs> All in the name of money. Where is our conscience? Where is the result of the churches and mosques we go every week? What is our Nigeria becoming? Nigerian, uh, Nigerians both young and, and old, we never be bought there. 
to dance and teach their children. But Amiya don't go, go, ka, ting, ba, ka, we, ni. They will never sing. Oh, mommy, she, un, re, re, ti, ya, da, ra, o. But rather, sing and dance to serve the great music. If you don't get money, hide your face, and people will be screaming, chai, there is God, though. Until we bear our body, that is, we wake up from our heart of irresponsibility, nothing changes. Remember, it is irresponsibility that makes a man become a liability. Bebody, eh, Nigerian youth. I've learned, mm. I've learned to be body wow. today. And I feel like I've learned African insurance. Yeah. I've learned African insurance. Inga, I have to say thank you for, 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 for that advocacy. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's very complete. Mm. And it's something that I, I, I share about because I also work uh, a lot with young people. The biggest thing leadership, political leadership should do, I, I listen to the to my president's address, um, I wasn't inspired. I, I wasn't inspired. See, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see it was because one of nothing. the most important things that leadership does, as you inspire. said, is inspire. inspire yeah. You know, the youths are not inspired. Yeah. And, and, and that sense, that cloud is very ominous. And that just leads them into this path mm. where it's all negative because they feel that for me to survive, I've got to do whatever it takes, yeah, it. you know, to, to survive. And then so you, so you begin to find all of these things. I think we just need to find a way to dial back yeah. and bring inspiration back into mm -hmm. this. Okay, I guess, this, I mean, he's actually said what I wanted to say, because I was thinking, you know, my, my own caveat as Libra, Libra was saying off air was really to say, where did they learn this thing from? You know, they didn't just show up yeah. being hopeless by themselves. They, they're looking at us, and like he said, we are not looking for a social solution. We're looking for a self solution so to speak and so this, everybody is looking for the easy way out yeah. nobody's looking to fix it for society nobody's ready to sacrifice you know and say look uh, instead of buying gen let's all stand together and say this thing cannot continue during the elections it wasn't just the youths that went to vote for recycled politicians it was but yes the youths constitute the largest mm -hmm. so if they stood up as one man and said you know which is why people like mogalu may have felt betrayed because they were thinking and counting on the youths to come out in number and say We'll get behind our man because they're seventy percent of population. But instead, no show, you know. But like you said, when Big Brother and I just shows up, everybody rallies round. Big Brother didn't just get the numbers they are getting today. Yes, they started from somewhere, yeah. and it now be becomes, um, you know, a way of taking out stress for young yes, people. Yes, it is. You know, in a hopeless society, somebody gives you know a glimpse of hope. Mm. Like, okay, this one will take my mind off crime. Will yes, take my mind off yes. the street. I want to be in this yeah. place. Mm. Yes, escapism. Secondly, government, the purpose of government is security and welfare of the people. But a situation where there is absence of that, it will be to your turn to Israel. Like Fida Castro once mm. said, in a state of lawlessness, it becomes illegal to be law-abiding. Mm. Wow. And, and so, what you have is a lawlessness and hopelessness right from the leader. You use the word, you climb and then you, you destroy the ladder. Yeah. And where the world is diversifying into a knowledge-based economy, what are we diversifying into? Nothing. Nothing. You had people who fought for June 12th. People like Moses Osakede as a youth leader died yeah. fighting for the actualization of June 12th. But these people are not celebrated. They are not Nobody taught remembers. about. Nobody remembers them. So why will anybody want to die again? Student unionism those days, actually you write from there and then become an advocate. But these days, you go, get into the university, all you're thinking of how to graduate quickly yeah. so that you can be making a, 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 living. a living. But there is hope. Yes, and I like the hope, that. The hope is that this Think. is the time mm. to start. The politicians are regrouping. Okay. Yeah. And they're already talking about 2023. They are meeting. You won't see the Duro Toye, you won't see the Mogalu now until six months to election. Mm. Now is the time for them to begin to go around. Or for us to get behind exactly. them. Exactly, get behind them. Let them, you know, begin to sell their programs and tell people Obama started four years before the election, moving around, traveling. So let's continue to sensitize these people. Yes. You'll be shocked. And how amazing an Nigerian you can turn out to be. Thank you. Mm. No, I don't really have anything to add. You know, I, I think it was a great advocacy. And um, I really hope it speaks directly to the youth, you know, in the manner that you intended. Um, I, you spoke in their language as well, which I thought was, was, yeah. was, 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 was <laughs> like definitely that. very important, mm. you know. But, you know, it, actually, 
your advocacy brought home Liberos's advocacy on mentorship. So it's the only way you can change that kind of mindset. It has to be through mentorship, exactly. through small groups, and then you know eventually it's like a, a virus that yeah, will then Which is why Show Ray is looking like a mentor because yeah. he's yeah. standing in the face exactly. of opposition. Yeah, exactly. And still, yeah. you know, and still standing strong. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, just like um, um, the Kennedy School of Leadership in Harvard, um, Doreen Fashola, something like that, that started in Lagos, of which uh, I'm one of the mentors. So I can assure you that things are being done in the area of mentorship program. Um, I, I don't tell you my own, uh, Nigerian youth, um, not just big body, but big sense here, you mm -hmm. understand? So um, on who will cry for ABBA, Cam Talk TV says the tax the government of Abia State is collecting every month from businesses in ABBA is almost half the federal revenue show. <laughs> Abia State receives from the federal government and yet nothing to show for it. Hmm. On the matter of capital punishment for kidnappers, Emeka Nweke says, death penalty for kidnappers, but meanwhile, the Nigerian government is granting amnesty and paying billions to terrorist groups like Boko Haram and Fulani militia headsmen. Hmm. On the matter of our decadent educational sector, Tola Jai says, the other day I corrected someone on the platform that they don't share blood, but the word is share. Okay? Uh, some people came calling me uh, a white man's slave. Honestly, the quality of our education is below zero. You need to hear and see the rubbish people talk and write. Much as we know, no one is perfect. There are some unpardonable mistakes. I hope it gets better. Okay, keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, uh, hashtag the Advocate NG, uh, on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com slash the Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That is Plus TV Africa. Mm. After the break, Uche asserts that climate change is a hoax. Who are we to believe? You decide. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Testing the waters can be a recommended approach. The climate change hoax. Yes, that is my topic today. After our too hot to handle clip was released, so problem the does not right, even include Africa. And Greta Thunberg is to be admired. We shouldn't dismiss her. Ah, sure. The president is right. She's exactly so quickly, the epitome tomorrow, of what our quickly, young quickly, ladies should nah, be. Nah, the president nah, is she's, right to go there, and she's it's a responsible puppet, thing to and do. She's been and I think it's actually irresponsible to imply that we shouldn't be bothered about climate change. No, nobody. I'm glad you added that. I personally think that climate change is a hoax. Due to my comments that climate change is a hoax. A few people were curious as to why I would take such a stance. And so this week, I decided to share why. Firstly, I'm pretty sure that many of you would not have heard of the 500 scientists who wrote to the United Nations declaring that there is no climate emergency. There is no cause for panic and alarm. There is no statistical evidence that global warming is intensifying hurricanes, floods, droughts and such like natural disasters, or making them more frequent. Instead, we got Greta Thornburg, a 16-year-old girl, commanding the airwaves, saying, you have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. So how true are her words? How are we sure that humans are really responsible for global war warming? Is there really an emergency as they would have us believe? We constantly hear that 97% of climate scientists think global warming is real and largely caused by humans. A Google search on this reveals that the number was widely promoted by an Australian blogger named John Cook in 2013. Then Al Gore deceptively chose 12,000 papers on climate change and manipulated and subjectively interpreted parts of abstracts to support his beliefs. Many scientists whose names were used protested. A recalculation showed that less than 2% of the papers cited mankind to be mainly responsible for global warming. 
the planet goes through weather cycles, and these have a much bigger impact on the climate than humans. There was also a time in the Earth's history, like the Cryogenian period, when the entire planet might have been a snowball. Many scientists don't buy into the climate change panic. Co-founder and former president of Greenpeace, by the way, Patrick Moore, says that climate change is a complete hoax and a scam. John Coleman, the late Weather Channel founder, called global warming the greatest scam in history. AccuWeather founder Dr. Joe Myers also agrees. So does Jeremy Corbyn's scientist brother, Pierce Corbyn. Not to mention the dozens of failed climate predictions that stretch 80 years back. The 2009 climate gate scandal at the University of East Anglia, when a release of internal emails showed scientists eager to deceive to get more global warming money with practices that range from bad professionalism to fraudulent science, bias, data manipulation, dodging freedom of information requests, and efforts to subvert the peer review process were uncovered. So what causes climate change? It is primarily caused by the fluctuations in the sun's intensity and also caused by the gradual changing tilt of the Earth's axis and changes in the Earth's orbit around the sun. There are other factors such as volcanism. So why the hoax? Climate change is a hoax led by the United Nations so that it can end democracy and impose authoritarian rule. Global warming was merely a hook to install the new world order, as stated by Maurice Newman, advisor to 2013 to 2015 Australian PM Tony Abbott. This mass hysteria is therefore, in my opinion, simply about money and power. Carbon taxes give governments much more control over commerce. Radical Democrats like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez proposing rebuilding all buildings in America and trains that will run across oceans in her Green New Deal to halt climate change. Somebody clearly benefits from this. Climate change is being used as a control tool by governments that push it. They whip up mass hysteria to impose taxes and all manner of control on the people because after all, we are saving the world. The bottom line is that climate change is still very much a mystery to us all. And until we have concrete proof that humans are mainly responsible for global warming, we all need to take a deep breath and actually calm down. No, I don't agree with you. Mm. That's okay. You see... Uh, <laughs> wait, let him laugh. Wait, my, wait, my, wait, my, wait. No, I must say this quickly. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> my sweetheart is also a geographer. Mm. Okay, Bravo. when you finish clapping, let her make her land, <laughs> land I, 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 I fundamentally disagree. Okay. So maybe I'm part of the hoax cabal. <laughs> uh, but, I, but I do disagree. Mm. I think that rather the, 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 this thing, the, the, there's some fundamental things around climate change. I do agree with you, also, however, with regards to, obviously, the sun. The Earth rotates around the sun. So... Mm. Whatever the sun does has an effect on us. There's no doubt about mm -hmm. that. But to say that humans who live on this planet, seven point something billion of us burning fossil fuels every day, mm. taking carbon out of the ground, mm. burning it, and we see it. If you go to China, there are days when you cannot see the sun. Mm -hmm. There are days you cannot breathe, you cannot see the sun. Why, Why is that? Because people are burning coal and fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. If you lived in, 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 in LA like 20 years ago, you couldn't see the sun. We had acid rain in Los Angeles. To, to say that climate change is a complete hoax, I, I No, I I'm not necessarily. No, sorry, let me but, just come but, in but and say I'm not saying that. Hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. So his train of thought is that, um, We as humans do not have an effect on the planet. It's actually, you know, I mean, uh, if you take, if you, if you stretch that logic is to say that we as humans who live on this planet, we have no significance, whatever. That's what, that's what you're saying. No, and that's not what I'm saying. Of us living, breathing, doing work, doing businesses, Without taking any effect. Then we have no effect on the planet. That, that, that will be stretching in a while. No, can I come but in? But I do agree Let us that, that, that there is a context to, to an economy. Everything is about, it's about money. We, we, we live in a planet now, everything revolves around money. Um, we were here. Uh, how many years ago when you had the uh, zero 
2000. Yes, they had yeah. that global yeah. scam. If yeah. you've heard it, say now millennium bug. Once you get yeah. to everything, will everything crash. Planes yeah. will fall out okay, of the sky. Okay, yes, we had that, and so on and so forth. So obviously, on both sides of the divide, there are people who stretch the argument yes. for for whatever reasons, for pecuniary reasons or whatever. But I would, I don't subscribe to the idea as reflected in your advocacy that somehow seven point something billion people living on this planet have no 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 no, no contribution effect. or no effect. Okay, no but please I must come so back to America. No because my, my, no you might line, you might continue you no, they my might line con of, of it's a of very quick one. I'm not really gonna say also anything. In that line, I so get that you it. can respond oh, to Oh gosh them. okay yeah, carry yeah, on yeah, carry on in one breath you say climate change is a hoax in another breath you say it wasn't caused by human that means there's climate change. Mm -hmm. So I feel settled. there's a huge misrepresentation yeah, yes, of what I said, but yeah, anyway, yeah, but carry let's, on. Um, let's, yes. let's represent it. Okay, from represent our own it from your own perspective. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 so, and, and so, for me, really, I, I like Rebecca has said, I, I believe it's a 50 50 thing. Mm -hmm. Not as, um, as challenging as people are making it to seem, mm -hmm. seem, but at the same time, there is definitely climate change and there's an impact. The only way I can even take it to the average man on the street is the river in my community. Mm. That is drying up mm. faster, faster than, than, ever. than ever. You know, it's not just about the sun. It's in the, also the impact of even the locals. Even plastics. Look at what plastics you know? are doing in our and, oceans. And, and so all, all of I this mean, contributes to all of this climate change that we're talking about. But yes, I agree that it's big business to some persons, to you know, some countries and... You know, look, and then, like Chuka talked about la last week, um, in Africa here is not as as um, we're not contributing we're, as we're much not as contributing some other as countries. We're not contributing as much as some other countries, but that does not mean that you know, if we just fold our hands, it, it won't it won't get to us. And then recently, they talked about um, that 31 years from now, cities like Lagos will submerge, and all those ones too. Yes, why it is good to you know predict. But I really don't think that um, it's as um, drastic as drastic as they make it seem. I agree with you partly, mm. and um, I completely love your advocacy. But I, I also understand. She's an agent that. Yes. No, okay. She's pushing this thing. So, so no, 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 no. She's giving us a platform to have this discussion. No, it's good. But I'm like, you have to let somebody have spoken. So I, no, I know okay, I must then, respond to yeah, this, so that, so that it does not, it doesn't like carry on. You know, I think I'm being misunderstood. I'm not saying that humans don't have any effect whatsoever on climate change. What I'm saying is that the degree at which they're pushing that humans actually have that kind of impact, I'm, I'm actually disputing You know there's some that. islands in, 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 in the Indian Nation that mm -hmm. are literally unlivable at the moment. That's true. But okay. there, also, there was you know, also times okay, that they were Jakarta, saying the, that city. the, yeah, the icebergs were melting, but then the icebergs, didn't, then they, then they formed I, again. They and then also in the 70s and the 80s, do you know that the prediction that they gave at the but, time was that but, it was going to be oh, an oh, ice okay. age? But do now you know they're that? talking about the, global but okay, but do you know that people, the governments and, and con countries, that's why I, I use Los Angeles. If Los Angeles didn't do anything about the, the, acid, the rain. acid rain, Los Angeles as a city will have become unlivable. So, so actions were taken by governments like the acid to solve rain that. In so a solve way that, that. No, not that. Not that. one. But so so it is possible. So it is possible. Okay, okay. That, I'm coming in. Technology uh, let me, and changes let me. in how we do we certain yes. things. Will affect I predictions. agree. Okay, let me come in. Let me come in. To what because degree? The fact Uchi, is, we don't know Uchi, to Uchi, what have to let degree. Us, you, you have to let us respond to your advocacy. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let me just come in now. Um, I think, yes, uh, clearly there's, there was that opportunity to misunderstand you because you were trying to debunk what you felt was a hoax. Mm. My problem with the whole climate change discussion, because even when I researched it, I realized it's very partisan. Yes. So I'm not interested, both you, from your yes, perspective yes, and theirs, be, most, yeah. most people who want to make the uh, argument against climate change, you can pretty much follow them and they're sounding like Trump. They're, you know, they're Republicans, they're this, they're that, and they're following a certain trend. Those who want to make it fall are telling liberals and this. And so I'm not interested. When people start going into camps, I'm not interested. I just want what's best for everyone. Let's forget scoring points. Let's look at it. We are for the earth. We are for preserving the earth for the, na for the um, generations generation. to come. And that's really where I end my okay, point. Um, I think I'm just going to say the, the makers of computer virus are also the makers of, of antivirus. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. I understand where yes. you're coming from. Yes, right. exactly. So it's when, like it's like big farm, it's like big pharma and and, and you, you, drugs. You, you, yes. So you so when you, when you when you when you see this kind of mm. argument and this kind of uh, economy, not even political now, economy, uh, court mm -hmm. strategies mm -hmm. and 
I, I keep quiet mm -hmm. and I watch from afar. Because I also know that major sponsors of grants are also major sponsors of war. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So we don't allow them to just take us into On camps, like you yeah. said. But unfortunately, in Nigeria, we don't have research so, centers so what you are to saying prove now, them now either wrong mm. or right. Mm. So what you are saying is that um, uh, the sponsors of uh, security votes are <laughs> also sponsors yes. of insecurity. <laughs> so that we can take it home. Okay. <laughs> 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 so now that, at least at I'm, now that everybody has spoken, what I really, the reason I had to bring this up is not that I actually I'm think... I'm glad you brought this yes, up. Now, it's not that I actually think man has no... Uh, responsibility or contribution towards climate so change. What I want to do is bring awareness so that it's not this kind of Don't swallow everything herd response that people have to absolutely everything. You know, they're fed stuff, they don't question anything, they don't go and read about anything, and they jump on the bandwagon. You know, somebody was asking me, <laughs> uh, climate change, climate change, where does he live? Because everybody's talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> where does he live? So, like, so now, where is he living? Your message that calm down yeah, is not as bad as cool out. But yeah. still do but your bit yeah, that for means, society. Yeah, no, absolutely. Don't, don't throw like, away. Let's, agree let's with, be friendly to the environment. Yes, you have absolutely. to be more. Yeah, I, 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 I always, be proactive. I yeah. always uh, compare it to, you know, you're not going to leave your house dirty with so much filth and rubbish because you diseases will come and all manner of things. So I believe we should definitely still take care of our environment. Just can we just every, everybody just calm down a bit, you know? Okay, yeah, that's let, all. Let's calm down. Let's just, chill, in Nigeria, let's just chill out. Let's just chill out. Nigeria, we haven't even gotten stirred up. <laughs> yeah, but we have, we, have, we have viewers in their spot. We're too laid back. We, we, have have we need to be whipped up into more okay. action. Okay. Our problems right. we, have we have enough change. change. <laughs> we have enough change to 2015. <laughs> we don't have problems with being calm. Our problem is worse than climate change. Oh, my goodness. Right, there you go. At least I can. all I can do is lay out my stall and encourage you to find out for yourselves. Emeka lays it bare from a personal experience after the break. Stay tuned. Oh, it's great to be back on The Advocate uh, and happy to finally, well, I, we've, we've had the show together, so, um, but it's good to be back with uh, Libby uh, on the show today. Um, so my advocacy this week is deeply personal, tragic, uh, and indeed frightening. I lost a close friend on Sunday a young man in the prime of his life. Rest in peace, Stanley Mwabia. In circumstances that appear to bear the imprint of some type of medical mishap. So while Stanley was undergoing needed blood transfusion, Stan died. As a result of donor blood being of the wrong resource factor, apparently the hospital lab technicians um, allegedly didn't screen properly for that and my friend died. Nine years ago, another friend of mine, Yakubu Abba, the kindest man I've ever known, also died needlessly an avoidable death while undergoing a routine procedure in an, in an Abuja hospital. But I get it. People die. We all die. People die every day. Some will say they were indeed destined to die. But let me tell you, if you run out into the road, onto a moving train, you surely will die. And there's nothing about destiny there. It's either you just wanted to commit suicide or it's just negligence. Um, let me go further. Like a Nollywood script, Mr. Audu Bulawayo Bukati tweeted a few days ago how a certain doctor, Yakubu Hassan Kwaji, was struck off the Nigerian medical practitioner's role following a petition he had written to the Medical Disciplinary Council way back in 2007. So according to him, sometime in 2016, one Issa Haman, now deceased, went to Dr. Kwaji's private clinic in Jemeta, Adamawa State, with stomach pain. Without careful examination nor due process, Kwaji collected 50,000 naira from the deceased person and rushed him into surgery. He removed the patient's both kidneys and then gave the kidneys to his relatives to bury, saying, these are the tumor causing the tummy ache. Soon, obviously, Hammond stopped urinating and started hemodialysis. Investigations in other hospitals revealed that he had no kidneys at all. Now, as if it's not bad enough that we have a huge challenge with access to health care and inadequate medical personnel, even as more professionals are leaving Nigeria daily, we have to add insult to injury. We now have to contend with a growing incidence of medical malpractices happening all over Nigeria. So I believe it is time doctors must have some sort of malpractice insurance as a requirement to practice so that families of patients 
who have been injured or suffered the loss of their loved ones can have some kind of recourse to some form of financial restitution and indeed make the hospital administrators realize there is a, not just a being struck off the road, but there's a high cost, a financial cost to their negligence. Rest in peace, Stan. I want to thank you for your generous suite, the laughter we shared, and most of all, your kindness. God bless and keep your family. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Anita, for that. Thanks. I mean, I, I didn't, share, I I didn't share know him personally, but he was, you know, he was a, a follower of mine on Twitter, and I, as okay. I followed him, you knew yes. him. I didn't know him personally, but for some reason, we followed each other yeah. on Twitter. And I always remember thinking, I love this guy's yeah. uh, tweets, you know. So it really just, it, it was such a sad thing when I heard, I think it was a couple of days. Yeah, was a couple died of on days, Sunday. Yeah, that, yeah, that he died. And, and to think that it was something so ridiculous as that. And, unavoidable. Unavoidable. And, you know, and I thought, I started thinking, God, how many people have gone through this? Many. I know in the last month many. alone, I heard of, there was a young child that we sort of know, it's like a, a three, four year old boy. And um, he was taken to hospital. His parents took him to hospital and because he was having some, he was just unwell. Rather than they treat him or examine him or do enough tests in order to find out what was going on, they started treating the poor boy for malaria, right? Uh, and then they Not gave him, they gave him some antibiotics, yeah. right? And then within three days, that was the end of that child. The child just passed away. Then an aunt or a, a woman that I know who I would refer to as an aunt um, died recently because she was having some problems at home. She couldn't breathe or something. They took her to the hospital. And then uh, as the nurse administered an injection again to mm. treat malaria, the woman started, you know, she couldn't breathe, and that was the end of it, and that was her life gone. Okay. So, you know, when you, you look at the way, why are we always so quick to jump to one kind of, um, well, what's the word, diagnosis? And it's usually malaria or whatever. But on, we, the, on the scan with typhoid, yeah. every time you go to any of these yeah, funny hospitals, typhoid, first thing they'll tell you is typhoid. typhoid. You, you see, we all have personal experiences on yes, this yes. issue, including my, my uncle, my mother's younger brother, Christopher Abu who had them um, had born and then the next thing he was admitted given uh, injections and then started jerking yeah. and just died like that wow. when i now hmm. sat with the family and said look we need to write a petition christianity religion yes. oh it won't bring back the dead it was let's meant to be. leave it for god mm -hmm. like you said it was meant to be the same thing with um, a friend's wife that died at child childbed in one of the hospitals in uh, in Lagos here, mm. public hospital, mm. and then, oh, if you write a petition against the doctor now, will he bring he'll her, lose he'll just lose his job, but you need to remove him from the system. The system so and send a message you, out to other negligent doctors. So yes. religion yes. will also come in. Mm. And, and, and then that's why nobody, like we all said here today, why the, the same reason why the youth with be body here, when the, the man who is at the helm of affairs does not have faith, in the public institution that he has sworn to protect, to defend, to defend. he would rather go out for medical treatment abroad, that says take everything. his children for medical treatment, take his children to school abroad. That says everything. Libro, that there was no panador in, in the clinic, clinic in of the, the presidential house. villa. I, I remember my first child at six months, he was tooling and vomiting at the same time. Rushed him to public hospital. Don't tell me malaria or typhoid. No, we, if we had even gotten to that level. You know, we, for an emergency, we were outside for almost three hours. Mm. Wow. Collect card, wow. do this one. And you know, at the end of the day, luckily somebody referred us to a private hospital where he was quickly attended, attended to. to. Imagine somebody that does not have money. Yeah you know, to rush to yes. a private wow. hospital. Wow. Some of these private hospitals also do the same thing. So, and that's why I completely agree with you. There should be some form of medical insurance, mm. you know. And then the NMA cannot sit down there and know what's happening everywhere. This idea of Christianity, God give it, God take it, or in Islam, they say, oh, God has given, God has taken. We should learn to also learn, to, we should hold people accountable. Responsible. Absolutely. Responsible for their actions and inactions. We are not holding government responsible. We are not holding private people well, responsible. You are even holding and responsible. then what is the value of life here? <laughs> okay, let me just come in because I made some notes while you were talking. I mean, sometimes people argue that it's because we don't have enough money. But quickly responding to what Libra said about his son, 
triage is just the method where you teach the staff to know how to select the people that need immediate attention. That doesn't cost anything. It just means you need to know who is an emergency, who Who's can not. wait. You can just keep someone out there for three hours and not care if they die or if they can't. But anyway, so very quickly, I, I, I had a consultation with someone who is a medical practitioner who works in you know, quality assurance. And I'm sure, hopefully, this uh, advocacy will go beyond because we need the people who are concerned to hear about it. And he was saying that, look, it's one thing to have medical insurance, the medical practitioner's insurance, but that on its own will not solve the problem. Yeah. So he was recommending three things and he said, look, first of all, the patients need to be empowered. Patients need to be ready to ask their doctors, what treatment are you giving me? Yeah. And put them on the spot. Because I, I was surprised yesterday <laughs> to learn that a colleague of mine whose wife was having a baby was told he should go and wait somewhere else. The husband should be there when the wife is having the baby. He couldn't barely hear his yeah. wife's voice. You don't know what's going on. If they gave her another baby, you wouldn't even know. So what I was saying is three things, and I'm on point number one. So the first one is that patients themselves need to be empowered, and they need to be emboldened to ask questions. Doctors are not gods. They should let you know, they, if, if possible, give you access to your yeah. patient's records, because that's the only way they will know that they're serving you. The second thing is that the Medical and Dental Council need to themselves start making, this is why I want this thing to go further. They need to know that they also duty of care to make the doctors accountable to us and to let patients know that if you find that you've uh, someone has committed an offense against you, you have, this is the route by which you should complain. And they should give us um, incidences of successful people who have complained about this. So people will be encouraged to take action. They can do this. So finally, the lawyers themselves, people like Libras, need to be able to step up to the plate and say, we're offering pro bono service here. Even when you we offer, the, the big family will tell you, leave it for good. I know, but not That's when they are now good. enlightened by the Medical yeah. and Dental Council, not when the doctors... We need to create a more active doctors society who know their rights. No, supposed to know. No, no, it doesn't matter. It, it this, was, is a, this, is this is a societal war. This is a societal war. The chemists. You know, everybody needs to fight yeah. it together. I, and I I'll, I'll rest with them. where somebody was asking, oh, hey, please, this drug, what is it for? The man said, no, 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 you are not supposed to I know. I know, but not now. And when I, you've heard this advocacy, you say, say no. no. Yeah. He has a right to of know. Of he does. You can't just be giving In him a plastic drug bag, he doesn't even know the name. He doesn't know, you know, what it is for. He should know. You see, liberal. Liberal, I think impunity beyond corruption is our problem. Yes. Do you understand? Yeah. Mm. You do something and nobody is. So in 2018, on my birthday, I went to Solo General Hospital to just yes. pro bono. And guess what? An 85-year-old man just fell down, trying to help him. And I saw this young doctor, a female, shouting on the man. Baba, I'm a kusi bielo, kusi le. That is, Baba, don't die here, go and die at home, something like that. Uh -oh. I forgot it was my birthday. I left everything I was doing, and I went to her. I tried to say, you know what? I don't think you have it as at home. The way and manner our medical practitioners, the way they treat people, you don't think there is flesh and blood on them. Oh, wow. Go to loot as I speak to you now. They don't have lift. The lift they have in 1960 is what they are still. Yeah, now yeah, they don't I have lift. That. I experienced Go that. to loot now they don't have. We have to carry So two weeks ago, a 14 year old girl was oh being pushed you know, to, a fifth to floor. the theater for an operation and gas finished as they were pushing her. We lost a friend early this year who was abandoned for nine hours in the hospital because a particular money was not brought. United Nations will give free drugs to this hospital and these doctors and nurses will take these drugs out for sale. Many cancerless people, they don't have cancer, had been forced to do chemo in this Nigeria. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yes, it's true. Last because week, of the money. My, neighbor, my neighbor lost his sister, his younger sister in Ife because they gave her lung injection. The lady died and the daughter died just last week. You see, Ebeka, it's, it's... not only politicians will be beaten at this rate. Medical doctors, police will be beaten. Wow. Well, okay. it's, um, like I said, it's, it's uh, deeply personal, tragic, and frightening. Some experiences bring you face to face with harsh realities that we live with. We advocate so that others can be spared their experience. Need keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook Plus TV Africa hashtag Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa hashtag Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time, keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now. Bye bye. Bye. Welcome to the Advocate 
a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. The moment Impressed. you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics and enjoys for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's really. disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, very, <laughs> terrible strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Yeah.